Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today's is a good one. It has to do with a lot of questions that I've received from you guys out there, the viewers, that want me to explain the fall transition in rivers for both largemouth and smallmouth. You know, they're very different transitions for both species of bass, so we're going to cover both of those because river fishing in the fall can be some of the best fishing you'll have all year. But the thing is, if you don't know where the fish are, you could really miss the boat and not catch a fish all day. They get very grouped up, they get in very specific places, and if you know where those places are, you will have phenomenal fishing. If you don't, you may zero on that day. So it's important if you like to fish rivers, stay tuned, we'll get to that. I do wanna remind you of a couple of things, guys. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons. I've only got so many scheduled per week. So if you're interested, make sure you check out one of those sooner than later because they are filling up relatively quickly. So if you've got a specific time that you want, please check that out. It'll be a great time for you to really dive in depth with me if you want to talk about fall river transitions or any other fishing topics that you want to discuss. I'm happy to help to help you catch a few more fish. So check those out. The link is in my video description. Also, if you want to support the channel, guys, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link that I provide in the video description. A small uh, portion of the, of the purchase gets kicked back to the channel, which allows me to put together content like this and continue to upgrade the equipment that I use. So thank you to all of you that are using it already. For those of you that have not, I would really appreciate it if you could do that. And heck, guys, if you just want to bookmark the link, that way you don't even have to think about it in the future. That's a great way to do it as well. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about the fall transition. I've got here a bunch of baits that will work great, but I want to let you know where you need to throw these baits first. And it's different based on largemouth and smallmouth, but this holds up pretty much wherever you're at within the country. So first off, let's talk about largemouth. Largemouth love to use the current to their advantage during the warm water periods in the summer months. They love to let the bait come to them. So do the smallmouth. But the largemouth, the one time a year when they really key in on current is during the summer period. Once that water temperature drops to the mid 60s and is continuing to fall with shorter daylights, uh, shorter days with less daylight, the largemouth really will start to position away from the current. Now this doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be three miles away or as far as possible. They may only be outside of the current, but they're generally not gonna hold right in the current like a smallmouth will. So largemouth tend to migrate back to where they were in the early part of the spring. The shallow bays, the shallow backwaters, any place that's got good green weed that has very little current or no current at all. Uh, you're talking about places that may have some good laydowns, may have some seawalls, riprap, areas out of the current that are going to stay warm because the largemouth are going to utilize the fall period to start to fatten up for the winter months. And keep in mind, if you're in the North Country specifically, a lot of the largemouth won't ever leave the shallow waters during the winter. They'll be only in a couple of foot of water, even if there's a foot of ice on top of them. So they generally will migrate back into those shallow bays that will, one, stay warm during the fall period. Uh, but it, two, they will also have a lot of bait fish that migrate to them. Now, whether you're talking about shad, if you're, say, fishing the Mississippi River or somewhere down south, the shad will start to migrate into some of the deeper backwater areas. Uh, so I'm talking about areas that uh, your backwaters that have the deepest holes possible generally will fill up with shad during the winter months. If you're on a place that doesn't have shad, it still doesn't matter that much. You know, if you've got a bluegill-based fishery, uh, they'll chase the bluegill back into the backwaters because the bluegill are going to do the same thing the bass will. They're going to move away from the current. Uh, you know, so they're going to feed up heavily, but they're going to be in relatively shallow water with no current. Hopefully there's some weed growth that's still green, hard targets, whether they're laydowns, stumps, docks, that type of thing. Anything that will absorb some sunlight during those colder fall days is where the largemouth are going to be. The smallmouth are going to move kind of the opposite way. The smallmouth are not going to get shallower. They're going to stay around the current, at least for the first part of the fall for sure. They're going to start moving to current breaks, uh, wing dams, sand drops, any place where they're going to still use to feed. A lot of times they're going to set up right outside of the mouths of the backwater where the shad and other fish are starting to push up into the backwater. They'll be on the points that form those backwater right off the main river channel. 
Uh, but if you don't have backwaters on your river, just look for your biggest current breaks that have the deepest water nearby. That's where they're going to set up. And generally speaking, they're going to winter in those deepest holes um, in the slowest water possible. But before they get to that, when you're talking about water that's still above, I'm going to say 55 degrees, uh, they're going to generally still be very active right out in the main current, hanging behind boulders, hanging behind log jams. Uh, sitting in front of island uh, island tips or on the downstream current seams formed by islands, any sort of channel swing bank, they're going to be in their same pattern as they are for the most part during the summer months until that water really starts to cool off into the low 50s. Uh, and you're just going to concentrate on them the same way you would, just fishing those current breaks. But the key is they will stack up a lot better during the fall than they will in the summer. A lot of times you find loner fish in one eddy in the summer, but in the fall, you may find five, six fish if you're making the exact same cast. They will start to, to really tighten up in some of these specific areas. Um, the bass will too, if you or the largemouth. If you find the largemouth in a backwater, there's generally a bunch more with them, but there will probably be a lot of dead backwaters as well. So it's important to find these areas. The key is, or the great part about this is, if you find them, they're generally going to be there from year to year unless something major happens where maybe the river floods and it silts in a backwater or just changes the way a current seam lays out. But for both species, once you identify where they're going to be in the fall, generally speaking, you can go back year after year after year and catch them in the same places because they're setting up in a specific manner based on all of the different conditions. So that's really important to note. From a bait perspective, guys, I've got five that I really like to throw in the fall. These will work for both species really well. Uh, the first one is a lipless crankbait. This is the Berkeley War Pig. I like to throw shad patterns in the fall generally, uh, but a half ounce Berkeley War Pig is one of my absolute favorite search baits in the fall. This works great whether you're fishing the wing dams or some sort of current seam on the main channel for smallmouth, or if you're going back into some of the shallower bays that have some good weed growth and you're looking to cover water to see if there's fish back there, largemouth back there, you can't really beat a rattle trap. It's a great bait that mimics the shad that are migrating into the, into the backs of those creeks. Next up, you've got a jerk bait. I don't care if you're on a lake or a river, in the fall, a jerk bait like this Berkeley Stunna is one of the best baits that you can throw. The little bit of a difference I'll make uh, based on the jerk bait has more to do with the color. I like to throw something that is more opaque and has some bright colors in rivers because rivers are generally going to be more stained, more off colored, and therefore something like this table rock shad that has some chartreuse, a nice purple back, stands out better and works better for me in rivers than maybe I'd be using in a lake where I might have clear water that time of the year and I'm throwing more translucent baits. But a jerk bait's a great bait. If you're in the backwaters chasing largemouth and you find a nice drop, uh, maybe it goes from three to eight feet of water and you've got some good green weeds, a lot of times those fish will sit you know, right on that drop because they are still sensitive to the deeper water. They still want some deep water and those good largemouth backwaters are gonna have some of the deepest water available in the backwaters on the fishery that you're on. So a jerk bait is a great bait to throw out, suspend over the fish and they will commit to it. And you can throw these in current too. Remember, a lot of your places where you're gonna be catching your smallmouth are gonna be bigger eddy breaks. Uh, and if you've got bigger eddies out there, there's enough room to work a jerk bait down and let it sit in place for a decent amount of time before the current pulls it away. But a jerk bait is a great fall bait anywhere you go, regardless of lake or river. Next up, we're gonna stick with the, the moving baits, a spinner bait. This is the War Eagle one. This is a chartreuse and white one. Again. This time of year, the fish are gonna be keying in on bait fish. It doesn't matter if it's shad or bluegill or minnows, just they're keying in on bait fish because a lot of the crayfish activity is starting to die off. A lot of the vegetation is starting to die off and therefore they're chasing those big balls of bait fish. And a spinner bait is one of the best ways to do that. You can bring it through the cover relatively weedless, whether it's stumps or laydowns or grass. And again, this works regardless of whether you're fishing uh, large mouth or small mouth, it's a great bait to catch fish all, all fall long on rivers. Next up, I always like to have a pitching bait, but I like to throw a little bit more of a compact jig. So this is the Dirty Jigs Luke Clawson Compact Pitching Jig. Um, 
you know, it's really just a smaller profile jig where I'm just looking to, I'm just looking to have a bait that I can soak in front of the fish's face. Now, remember, if you're chasing largemouth, your hard targets are going to be a great place to fish because those hard targets absorb sunlight, produce heat. The bass want to be by heat when you have falling water temperatures. And a jig is a great way to get your bait down in there on all rivers across the country. But the same holds true for smallmouth. If you've got a good log jam or a good rock that's absorbing heat right in the middle of a shallow river, a jig is still a great bait to bring by them. Now, I know I just said that they're feeding primarily on bait fish. The truth is, if a crawfish goes by them, they're still going to eat it. So that's something that you want to look at. I like to go a smaller trailer. This is the Berkeley Crash Craw. Uh, just another really good trailer that fits a jig nice. And I like it because it's also got more of a flat bottom. So when you're talking about uh, current, it kind of glides a little bit better, which I like. And also when you're coming through lay down, I think it's a more natural fall. But the key there is I like a compact jig. Next up is another one of my favorites is just a swim jig. A swim jig is a great bait to cover water looking for those areas that the largemouth or smallmouth might be stacked up in. You know, it doesn't matter if you're fishing smallmouth or largemouth, you're dealing with rivers. So you've always got a lot of wood, a lot of stuff, debris that's just piled up in areas. And a swim jig is one of the most uh, perfect baits at coming through that cover, especially when you're dealing with current. A lot of baits, even if they're weedless and current, will roll and catch the hook. A swim jig is one of the most weedless baits in current. It's one of my go-tos year-round anytime I'm fishing rivers for both largemouth and smallmouth. If I'm fishing largemouth, I like to go more with the bluegill colors. If I'm going smallmouth, I generally will throw more of a shad imitation, a chartreuse and white, a straight white, something along those lines. And then I've got a Berkeley Pit Boss as my trailer, which I think is a great bluegill mimicking trailer. Again, a little bit more compact, a little bit more built. But keep in mind, this is a part of the year where you can go with a bigger bait. Like my last choice here, I'm just going to show you. It's right on my rod. I've just got a big uh, three-hook Vixen. I guess this is the standard size now that comes out, but this is just a Vixen topwater uh, walking bait. The key here is, you know, towards the fall, you're dealing with the, the biggest time period of the year where your bait fish are going to be at their biggest size, meaning they're done growing for the year. Your fry have grown up. You still will have a lot of small bait fish, but the bait fish that hatch those little fry that, you know, grew up that year are now that big or are now bigger. So, you're dealing with bigger bait fish a lot of times. Same thing with your bluegills. Your, your bluegills have grown up and it just, you have bigger fish, uh, bigger forage species out there that your bass are gonna be keen in on. They want big meals to store fat for the winter. So don't be afraid to throw a big walking topwater bait. That's one of the best river, uh, river baits for both largemouth and smallmouth out there. So I would highly recommend all of these baits, guys. The biggest thing here is to recognize that smallmouth and largemouth are generally going to separate this time of year. That does not mean you can't find areas where you have both, but they're going to separate. The smallmouth still will use the current until you really get to the low 50s, and then at that point, they'll start setting up in their wintering areas, the deepest holes on the river. And the largemouth will straight get out of the current and go into the backwaters that have some hard targets and some deeper water. So I hope this river fall transition video helps you out. If it did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. We got another video coming up tomorrow.